Welcome to Viewpoints. I'm Heather Isvron, and with me today is Ed Lowry, Principal for XLaw Global. Welcome, Ed. Thanks for having me. So you're recently retired from the Secret Service as Assistant Director for Training. Yes. And uh, what we're finding here is at the center is that we, we see folks going from the public sector to the private sector, and then sometimes going back to the public sector. So today we just want to talk about private sector involvement. And now that you're on, you've been on both sides, uh, just looking at your perspectives and, and what you think about it. So the first question is, uh, now that we've had all these disasters and many folks coming out and saying how important the private sector partner is, what have you seen, especially in the last year? I think private sector um, fills a, a gap in the capabilities of the government. I mean, uh, after 25 years in the Secret Service, uh, we're very comfortable working collaboratively, um, very comfortable working in a team fashion. We, you know, that was one of the mantras of the service is you had to use everyone's skills to get the job done. Um, and now that I'm out in the, in the private sector, I can see from the outside that sometimes the federal government doesn't have the, the bandwidth to handle any specific problem. And that may be a good time that the private sector can step in and, and provide assistance. And so what did that look like on the ground in the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, where you guys so, were? So, uh, so we were uh, conducting a lot of uh, humanitarian aid um, based on you know, security, logistics, humanitarian aid, deliveries, what have you, but uh, specifically supporting some of the private sector companies. There were some very large companies based in, uh, in Puerto Rico that also had um, office spaces there in the uh, Virgin Islands. And they took an active role in, in caring first for their employees, and in some cases, these companies had you know thousands of employees, um, but then there was a time where then they took a, took a more um, holistic view, and, and they went out and uh, tried to take, especially in Puerto Rico, tried to take care of a lot of the communities. So they would identify where more than a few of their families lived, and they would actually start delivering humanitarian aid and water supplies and what have you. And we ended up doing a lot of that support for those movements also. Um, so it was interesting to see companies of their own volition um, stepping forward and and uh, accomplishing feats that the government quite honestly couldn't do at that time because they had to take a a uh, whole island view um, or look at the infrastructure which only the government is capable of taking care of. And what do you see as some of the challenges uh, for helping the government deliver? Uh, I think uh, I think it, it's it's not a perfect process by any means, and the, probably that, that is the big weakness, is the process. Um, and again, having done 25 years in the government myself, I recognize that there's, it's very easy in the middle of, of the whirlwind of a disaster or a large security effort or what have you, to only look inward and only look at your assets as far as the government. Um, and it's very difficult, especially if that plan hasn't been put in place, the processes aren't already in place, it's very difficult to open up the aperture and say, hey, what else is available out here that we can help? As opposed to just you know, trying, where can we get more National Guard? Where can we get, it doesn't always have to be a governmental entity. But unless that process is in place ahead of time, mm -hmm. it's very difficult for the company even to uh, try to insert themselves. Um, and, you know, it, it's very difficult to get inside the process at that point. Yeah, and we had Mona Barnes here, uh, who's the emergency management director for the Virgin Islands, and she was talking about, you know, in the middle of the disaster is not the time for your that private sector partners to be, <laughs> to be your best friends. So right. uh, what would you suggest if, if you're speaking to state, local, and feds on how to build relationships better with the private sector before it happens? Yes, be always before it happens. Yeah. Um, I, well, and it's, it's not necessarily the case. It has to be before. It's better if it's before. Much more efficient. But again, reaching out, DHS, uh, obviously the service was a member, part of DHS, was always preaching the collaborative effort, state, local, federal uh, partners, and a, a huge amount of uh, private sector outreach. Um, I think that that time has to, it has to be an iterative process. Um, within the service, we had you know the Electronic Crimes Task Forces, which was um, state, local, federal law enforcement, and the private sector. Um, it's a model that works, but you have to work at it as far as inside and outside the government. Open the private sector um, in the before disaster strikes, they may not necessarily be reaching out and looking for those relationships because they're a for-profit business, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if you, if the government opens up the door and offers and holds roundtables and what have you. That's where that discussion starts, um, because in the middle of in the middle of the disaster response, uh, 
you know, my company, for example, you know, we were conducting the operations for the for the private sector for the our clients, but then there was a definite point where we had extra bandwidth. We could have picked up the slack um, and and helped with some of the other things, but there was no way for us to engage at that point. Everything again, we were talking about a black swan event where right. the uh, infrastructure was in place. The first hurricane, second hurricane, then it all moved and it went to New York. It, it was all over the place. Um, and but our clients were always there, so we had been there for quite some time, and still are there actually. So you're not just there to respond, and you're there also in the recovery phase. Absolutely. So, so perhaps maybe the best idea is to identify those partners that would be able to be there afterwards as well. Yes. So and again, uh, FEMA did a fantastic job. Uh, the government as a whole did a fantastic job. Vaima was uh, you know, I was there between the hurricanes. Vaima was in the in the middle of the whirlwind quite literally um, and they did a fantastic job the um, the preparation is good but there yeah, there has to be the ability to pivot somewhere in the middle and recovery right now the recovery effort that process works I mean there's a contracting process and and you know um, and it, that's run through a centralized to try and limit fraud and what have you that goes on that process works but there has to be a process or a ability to pivot in the middle where you realize that you're up against a black swan event as, as a government employee. You're up against something where you don't have the assets. Can you start something at the ground? Because quite honestly, you know, as we heard from Mona and, and the rest of the folks, communications were down. Their, infra their command infrastructure was you know, scattered. There has to be a place where the people who know exactly what they need have the authority to go out and get the, the help they need. And if that's a private sector company stepping in, um, on a short-term contract, or or not? I mean, we did more than a lot of, more than a little bit of, uh, you know, gratis work, which was fine. Um, mm -hmm. Delivering, you know, water to you know, towns throughout Puerto Rico wasn't necessarily on our job description, but it was something we could do. So that's what we did. Mm. Well, it's interesting because you know there were thirty presidentially declared disasters and the hurricanes. Right, of course. So, I mean, you have wildfires and mudslides in California, and uh, then you have so many dispersed assets and resources that it seems to me just it's a no-brainer for the private sector to be able to be a partner and a real one at that. Because I would hear that when I speak to folks and interview well, them. And there, and there are. I mean, there's some, some very large construction companies and, and what have you, or, or retail construction companies. Uh, supply companies that I know of that have an active uh, disaster response and they'll, and they'll bring um, that kind of equipment to bear. But th they're always going to need operational level folks. And if there are operational level groups like, like Xlog that, that is on the ground doing the job, if there was a place, again, we're talking about a, a, an obscene amount of activity for FEMA and VIEMA and what have you, if there's that place to plug in in the emergency, we can worry about the niceties later. But, um, you know, there's a a lot of work needs done in the beginning, but there should be a process in the middle where someone can call uncle and, and ask for help. And kind of a, a neat um, analogy is, you know, FEMA has the reserve core. Yes. So uh, it's interesting how they're going to get these folks that had careers and mm -hmm. just want to come back and do something meaningful and vetting those people ahead of time so that they can just be deployed right away. I mean, it's perfect. And this is not a new idea by any stand the stretch, right. but it's very difficult doing the same thing with the private sector company. Absolutely. As well. Same Absolutely. kind of vetting and then, then deployment. Right. So with the advent of these natural disasters that are now black swans and anticipating that there may be more in the future, not when, but or well, science seems to say it not will if, but when, yes. So what would you say, uh, would be the perfect way to move ahead. Again, from my time in the government, it's easy to hold your, your after actions and, and never take that next step. Um, time's, time's ticking away. We know, you know all the signs again is pointing towards more natural disasters, OCONUS, CONUS, um, that the, the government's going to have to respond to and the private sector for that matter. So now is the, now is the time to take this step. Not, not to talk about it and then hold a meeting about it and then hold a meeting about the meeting. Right. But let's make those steps and make the contacts now. Excellent. Excellent advice. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time today, Ed. Well, thank you for having me.